Welcome back, everybody. It is Cheapo time again in the Cheapo Nation. Today, something brand new, and I mean brand spanking new. This multimeter just came out about a week ago. That is fresh off the presses. It's the all new Ammeter 42B. Let's take a look. This unusual looking digital multimeter shipped via Amazon for 30 bucks. It's mean, it's lean, it's one funky looking multimeter machine. Wow, no rotary selector switch. This is strictly push button technology. As mentioned, this came in from Amazon for about 30 bucks US. And I gotta say, ah, oh, funky, yeah. Um, but you know what? It's not all about the looks as we'll soon find out. What do you get in the box? Well, first of all, yeah, you get your generic brown box. Now, something I noticed on this particular box yeah, there's, there's tape, tape here. So I'm just curious, I wanted to do this with you guys just to see what the heck they're trying to cover up. What's going on here? Oh, non-touch measure by infrared. What the hell are they talking about? Infrared, didn't anybody get the memo? Okay, so I think probably better if we just put this uh, back on because that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Just kind of put it, yeah. Now you also get a thermal couple because yes, this little ammeter also does temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Awesome. And you get your test leads. Now these are a little bit on the small side. Um, kind of cheap, nothing too grandiose, I must say. Uh, they have a cat rating of cat 3, 600 volts, but um, yeah, 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 not very uh, thrilled about these. Take a look at the bottom side. We have a little bit of shroud going on, but um, uh, it just feels really, oh, oh my, feels really cheap. And you know what? No word of a lie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also get that operator's manual, really nothing more than a fold out piece of paper, giving you a quick overview of the functionality and the uh, ranges themselves. So it's all in English, one piece, uh, I, better than nothing, I guess. Let's talk a little bit about form and functionality. Um, you know, this is super cheap feeling, I'm telling you. This gives credence to the word cheapo, but not in a good way. No, it just feels incredibly oh, cheap. Wow. Something like you get from the dollar store toy department, if you know what I'm talking about. Just a really low grade quality of plastic. Um, yeah, they've got some soft touch buttons here. Thank God. But at the end of the day, when you pick this up and you just feel how, oh my gosh, it's just not gonna, not gonna put any smiles on your face. On the back, we do have that standing bale tilt stand. It comes up pretty noisy um, in terms of, you know, yeah, I guess it, I guess it works, but uh, oh, God, that's cheap. Also to gain access to the battery compartment, you actually have to uh, take out three, that's right, three Phillips screws to get into the battery. So no easy breezy access. Uh, you better have a screwdriver on you. Oh, why, why? Something else I don't like, uh, yeah, take a look at the bottom. So they've gone ahead, they put the current inputs on the top. Okay, whatever. But they've got the negative on the right and the uh, positive on the left. It's all backwards, it's backwards. Why can't they just do things the normal way? Ugh, not safe, not safe. We've got our on off button in the middle. Below that are temperature, Celsius and Fahrenheit. Strictly above that, we have our range switch. On the far left, hold, maximum, current, high current, 10 amps, ACDC, as well as the voltage below that, ACDC and non-contact voltage. On the far right, we have our resistance, capacitance, diode and continuity. Above that, milliamps, ACDC. Frequency plus duty cycle. Finally, a rel feature. The very top of the multimeter, we do have that recessed LED that is for uh, NCV as well as continuity, I believe. So uh, we'll take a look at that as well. Okay, with that display invoked, let's turn on the backlight. And there we go. Okay, so we have some bleeding here on the right hand side. I guess the backlight is okay. Uh, probably nothing to write home to grandma about, but you know what? Definitely seen worse. 
Now the backlight will not stay on indefinitely, I do not believe. Let's give it a few seconds, see what the timeout is on this little guy. I think it's about 20 seconds. Here at the top as well, you can see we have our little timer. That's because we are in auto shutdown mode. The meter will turn itself off after approximately 10 minutes. And there you go. So it's about what, 30 seconds or so? Yeah. Putting it beside the Habitest HT-118A, the multimeter, cheapo multimeter of the year last year. Congrats, Mr. Habo. Yeah, you can tell it's definitely small, 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 and kind of svelte. All right, I've got the cheap and cheesy test leads into the cheap and cheesy meter. Hey, they should call this the cheap and cheesy. Eh. Anyway, let's start our DC accuracy test. So when you turn the meter on, it does default to volts DC. That's good. And here we go, starting off in our DC accuracy test. 2.500 volts, what we want. 2.506. Good to see. Let's go to the next one, shall we? And we have to flip the switch. 5.000 is what we want. 5.01 is what we get. Okay, up, up, and away. Should be looking at 7.5. 7.50, 7 7.51. Very good. Well, at least it's accurate. And finally, 10 volts is what we need. 10.02. Hey, it's accurate. It's accurate. Oh, it's accurate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, quick DC accuracy showdown time. I've got Mr. Fluke 113, true RMS, up against the little animator and 42B. We're gonna take it up to about 30 volts and see how, how well they are together. Here we go, guys. Starting off around two volts, 2.04, 2.05 for Mr. Fluke. Let's take it up, shall we? 6.61 volts, 6.62 for the Fluke, 6.62 for the animator. Slowly but surely, 7.25 volts according to the Kaiweets power supply. 7.26 and 7.26 respectively. Oh, they are neck and neck thus far. Let's go up to, oh, 10 volts. Can we do 10 even? 10.06 volts, 10.09. Okay, 10.12 and 10.11. Wow, thus far, they are so close. Up, up and away, we're gonna go up to a whopping 16.87 volts. 16.9 for the animator, 16.88 for Mr. Fluke. Okay, hitting high voltage territory, 24.94 volts, according to the Kaiweets. 24.99 for the animator, 24.95 for the Fluke. Let's max it out now, shall we? 30.43, 30.48 for the animator, 30.42 for the Fluke 113. Oh yeah. Well, suffice to say, it was a draw. Yes, now there is no a bar graph on the animator, so we can't compare bar graph uh, speed, but I must say in terms of accuracy, at least, the little animator AN42B held its own against the fluke. Now, was that just a fluke? Oh, that's a bad joke. Current alarm, that's a good thing. 10.2 amps. A lot of juice right now flowing through those crappy test leads. Oh yeah, they're definitely getting warm, a little toasty. Reminds me, I haven't had breakfast. Oh, God. Oh, well. Okay, I'm going to bring things down. You can hear that power supply now kicking in. All right, bring it back down. And we are sort of in the safe zone. So, oh, well, it held its own in terms of high current. Uh, apparently, it is fused. We'll take a look at what kind of fuse they're using after. But, uh, yeah, I guess it did it. It survived. Because it is a touch button digital selection instead of a standard rotary selector switch, you know there's a relay inside and you can hear it. So besides that annoying beep, you can hear that relay clicking off and on. It's pretty loud at times, so eh, just slightly annoying. Here we go. Wow, I'm telling you, I was not expecting that. Whew. So, apparently not on these cheap, really cheap, really just, just just feel really cheap leads. There's no resistance. Okay, so we're good to go. Let's start off here. This is a one ohm resistor right down there. And we'll just see how accurate we are. One ohm. 
and wow, spot on. So, huh, go figure. Okay, starting things off at three mega ohm, 2.995 mega ohm. Let's take it up to six mega ohm. Pretty darn close. 10 mega ohm. There we are. A little bit of a delay, nothing major. Let's try 100K, 110K, 111K. Yeah, not so bad. 200K, 500K, 900K. Yeah, oh well, yeah, it's okay, it works. Already the LED diode testing time. Let's see how well or not so well the Animator AN42B can do. Starting off with the green LED. And yes, it is barely lit and we do have a forward voltage drop. Over to the yellow, yes. The red, oh, so far three for three. And Mr. Blue, oh my, was not expecting that. Finally the white, yes. So, whoa, five for five. Elimination and that forward voltage drop. I gotta say, I'm a little shocked. And the animator can also light up this little LED strip. Uh, wow, no problems there. So, uh, kudos. Output voltage in diode mode is very respectable. Whoa, just under four volts, about 3.9 volts. Awesome. Capacitance is next. Starting off with a 100 nanofarad capacitor. An oldie but a goodie. And 112 showing up, nice and fast. Next up, we're gonna take a look at this one microfarad capacitor. Coming up as 0.979, definitely within spec. Okay, let's go to the big boys now. Um, this is a 60 millifarad uh, measuring capacitance range. Here is a 47 millifarad, 47,000 microfarad. Let's see how well it does. Three, two, one. Action. And it's thinking. There we go. Hey, that was actually quite fast. 42.99. That is pretty well in spec for this capacitor. So yes, and fast, which was really nice. Well, you know what? When in Rome, let's see if we can outdo its maximum rating. This is 100 millifarad, 100,000 microfarad. Here we go. Oh, the suspense is killing me. And it's thinking we're in millifarad mode. Come on, come on. Oh, no can do in and meter land. It's a zero, so over limit. Ah, we tried, we tried. Continuity time, time to shine. Here we go, default stock test leads. And they are cheap and, you know, cheesy, but so far they seem to have stood the test. So how will they perform here? Let's find out. Do one. Oh my, fast, latched, and fairly loud. Oh, wow, was not expecting that. Jeez, jeez, pretty good, pretty good. Pro Masters. Yeah, that's really good. Latched, loud, fast. Almost no delay, I gotta say. You, my friend, have surprised me. You cheap little cheesy looking thing, you. Awesome. Seventy-three point six decibels maximum output volume in continuity. The AM42 also has a max min function. Let's just invoke that, and we're sitting here now around ten point eight volts, and let's bring it up a little bit, and we're now around nineteen point eight seven. Let's take it over to about twenty-two point four volts, coming up with twenty-two point five. So we are in maximum now. If we bring it down. You can see the voltage is not showing any differently. Now we pick it back up to max mode. And yeah, as soon as we go over that 25 max, uh, it keeps on accruing. So, you know, it's not a bad little feature for a cheapo. Um, yeah, if we hit the button again, bring us into min, 
tells us that the minimum voltage we reached at that peak period was 4.8 volts. So yeah, there you go. AC volts now, 120 volts AC, you can see, no worries here. Now let's just pull that out and let's switch into non-contact voltage at the same time. Here we are, EF mode, and we'll see how good it is. Come on. Wow, that is funky sometimes. So we're getting visual as well as an audible display. And it seems to work okay. Yeah, anyway, all right. All right, it's high voltage time. I'm gonna start off with 500 volts. DC, let's see if this little A and N meter can handle it. Here we go. Three, two, one. 500 volts, and yeah, there we are. No high voltage alarm or alert whatsoever. But okay, let's bring it back down. Let's try 1,000 volts now. Okay, 1,000 volts is next. Here we go. Twice the power. Three, two, one. Now we're getting a high voltage alarm. And it seems to be handling that burst. No problem. Let's bring it back down. We're going to try that one more time. 1,000 volts. Yeah, right off the scales. Had that audible as well as visual alarm, which is a good thing. Um, there you go. So all in all, it seems to have survived this test. Oh, good stuff. Finally, in temperature mode, it defaults to Celsius, 21 degrees right now here. And I hit it again, we're gonna get our Fahrenheit reading, 71 degrees, no thermal probe attachment required. If you wanna measure temperature or anything else, of course, just plug that in and you're good to go. Wow, that sure is a bright orange, isn't it? As I mentioned before, we have three Phillips to open this up and gain access to the battery as well as the fuse, as you can see. Two AAA cells here power this little multimeter. And we have two glass fuses easily accessible, so that's a good thing. Um, yeah, just too bad that it was a little more um, handy or quicker to get access to those batteries, but at least we have fuse access at the same time, good thing. Now we have another one, two, three, four screws to open this guy up. Already on the inside, starting off with the back cover, you can see uh, no shielding, of course. Uh, wow, well, this is just such cheap plastic, I'm telling you. My gosh. Anyway, uh, that's not much going on on this side of the board. So there's a pretty good bird's eye view of what you're getting here. Um, and it's really not a whole lot. Starting off with those input jacks. Yeah, definitely the split variety. Um, soldering wise, they seem to be okay. It does look like a rather thin grade um, that they're using here. In terms of fuses, we have the standard glass style fuses. This one is five by 19.5 millimeter, not 20, but 19.5 millimeter by five millimeter, 10 amp, 250 volt. Directly above it, we have a 800 milliamp, 250 volt fuse as well. And yes, I did accidentally blow this one. That's why it looks all sizzled. Here we have our standard current shunt, rather small, meek looking, a couple of melts, one PTC, and that is on the voltage side. And here the white box is, you guessed it, the relay. It's a one amp, 30 volt DC relay. And that is what is doing our range selecting. Moving up the board, we have our crystal oscillator. Here we have some uh, programming inputs from the factory. And of course the main IC, which surprisingly seemed to be quite good actually, uh, it's cobbed. I don't see any standard EEP ROM here as well. So everything is on the ICU itself. Right in the middle, we have our speaker. And uh, yeah, that's pretty well it, that's all. Moving further at the top, and wow, we'll get into this in a second. Here's the LED, that's what gives us the uh, notification, the visual for the NCV as well as the audible alarms. But uh, oh my goodness, Gracious, look at that. That is our NCV right there. That really sad looking wire. They didn't even give us a metal filament. No, they just soldered a cheesy wire. And that's it, that's all. So, mm, interesting. 
taken it down just a little bit further. You can see on the opposite side here, all those touch resistive uh, pads. That's for all the different ranges, what have you. Um, oh, not too bad, not too shabby. Here's our standard uh, LCD mechanism. This is what feeds the LCD Elastomar, the zebra strip right over here. They just touch together and we have that nice looking display. Not much else going on here. A little rubber strip to protect it from the back of the inlay on the PCB itself. That LCD display too, it's kind of interesting. It's actually in its own little cage here. I uh, don't normally see that, um, but it's nice contained housing. There's the Elastomar itself. And uh, yeah, I like it, you know, in terms of uh, manufacturing perspective, probably once again, uh, quicker and easier to assemble like this. So yeah. Finally, we'll have one main pad. That's for all of these soft touch buttons all on one assembly. So yeah, it makes it easier, especially in terms of factory production. But uh, yeah, not much else going on. Okay, gonna put everything back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Anmeter AN42B. Well, despite a valiant effort on its part, I'm gonna have to say give this one a pass. Yeah, it did actually perform quite admirably you know all things considered but it's just not worth the 30 to 35 bucks that they're asking hey this thing is built cheesy cheap i can't tell you just how crappy this thing feels in the hand just doesn't bode well for long-term wear it's too bad really because this excelled at quite a few different things including that led diode test which really rather shocked me and funny enough the default test leads as crappy as they were actually performed quite well during the review so well you know what just can't judge a book by its cover still at the end of the day if this was a 10 15 dollar multimeter i'd say go out and grab one now but for the 30 35 bucks it's just definitely not worth it now pass this one by you can do a lot better and a lot better quality the anmeter an42b gets a disappointing 2.5 out of five stars Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Lots more coming your way. Don't forget Sanwa, end of the month, February 22nd to 26th, Sanwa week. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of giveaways, and it's coming closer than you think. Till the next one, keep on testing.